それでは、えー、帝国になりましたので、えー、これから、えー、グローバルリサーチカウンシル第4回、えー、年次会合記者会見をあの始めさせていただきます。本日はお忙しいところをお集まりいただきましてありがとうございます。本日は日本語英語の同時通訳、えー、日本あ、um, by the way I will I will speak in the same same thing in English this soon so、um, えー、英語日本語同時通訳があの、えー用意されております日本語は、えー、1チャンネル、英語は2チャンネルを、えー、に,おあそあ、えー、にあの合わせていただければと思います。えー、Thank you very much for coming to、uh, this、uh, press conference at the opportunity of the fourth annual meeting of the Global Research Council.For today's、uh, press conference, the simultaneous interpretation between English and Japanese is provided. So please tune in to channel one for Japanese and channel two for English. So, and、uh, I would like to draw attention to the agenda that、uh, we, which is provided to in, from,、uh, in front of you. Before、uh, going to the agenda items, I would like to ask uh, to uh, simply introduce the participants from the uh, GRC uh, uh, annual meeting. First of all,、uh, Professor Bai Chunli, President of the Chinese Academy of Science and the Chair of the GRC Governing Board. Dr. Yuichiro Anzai, President of the Japan Society for the Promotion of Science. Dr. Bibali Damons, Acting CEO of the National Research Foundation of South Africa. Dr. Aldo Strobel,、uh, Executive Director, International Relations and Cooperation of National Research Foundation. Professor Tabareker Kalina Chandrasekhar, Secretary of the、uh, Science, Ed Science and Edu Engineering Research Board of India. And finally, Professor Rick Rylance,、uh, Chair of the Research Council UK, Executive Group of the Research Council UK. Thank you very much. Now I would like to、uh, proceed to the uh, uh, agenda of this、uh, press conference. First of all, I would like to invite、uh, Professor Bai Chun Li, President of the Chinese of Acad Academy of Science and Chair of the GRC Governing Board, to make the overview of the Global Research Council. So, Professor Bai, please.、Uh, good afternoon.、Uh, my name is、uh, Chun Li Bai. I serve as、uh, President of Chinese Academy of Sciences. And also the president of TWAS. TWAS,、uh, you know, is a world academy of sciences for the advancement of science in developing worlds. I have served as chair of the governing board of the uh, GRC uh, in the past year. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, I think I'd、uh, like to welcome you to this uh, press uh, conference at the conclusion of the fourth annual meeting of the GRC. Uh, held here in Tokyo. So, first and most, I would like to thank our hosts here in Tokyo,、uh, the Japan so so Society for Promotion of Science, led by Professor Anzai, and the National Research Foundation of South Africa,、uh, led by Dr. Beverly Demons. These organizations have put together an、uh, outstanding meeting, and I would like to congratulate them on the success. So, this is、uh, the fourth annual meeting of the GRC uh, following uh, uh, from previous meeting in Washington, D.C., Berlin, Beijing, and here. So, the GRC is an informal virtual organization composed of a publicly funded research councils from around the world. Each year, the GRC chooses one or two issues. That are broadly、uh, relevant to our participants and、uh, focuses on addressing these issues as a global issue. To address these issues, at the GRC hosts five regional meetings around the world each autumn one each in the Americas, the Asia Pacific region, Europe, Middle East, North Africa, and the Sub Sahara. Africa, followed by an annual meeting in May.、Uh, this year, the GRC addressed two topics 
founding scientific breakthrough, uh, and uh, building research and uh, education capacity. Uh, GRC has been in existence for uh, just uh, four years, and in that time has made significant progress towards building trust and a deeper understanding between public funding agencies uh, worldwide. So I would like to now turn to my colleagues, the co-hosts of this year's meeting to address in more detail the out outcomes of this meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Bai, for your uh, overview of the Global Research Council. Now I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Yuichiro Anzai uh, to make a report of the fourth annual meeting of the Global Research Council. Yuichiro Anzai of JSPS, and thank you very much, Prof Professor Bai, for your introduction to our uh, GRC. Uh, it was great honor that uh, JSPS, Japan Society for the Promotion of Science, hosted the fourth annual meeting of GRC here in Tokyo with the very strong partnership with the NRF, National Research Foundation of South Africa. Uh, and we are co-host organization of GRC, uh, this GRC meeting this year. Uh, and uh, uh, we are happy uh, to tell you that the heads of research councils from 56 organizations in 52 countries, and uh, adding to that, are uh, four international organizations gathered in this meeting, as well as various stakeholders, uh, such as government officials, university directors, or publishers, attended as observers. The number of uh, those you know, important observers is 22. We also had a privilege to receive a video message from Prime Minister Shinzo Abe at the opening session, and that we posted on JSPS YouTube channel shortly. Uh, I'd like to just uh, uh, pick up uh, one of his messages uh, given uh, by video message to us all. Uh, he said that what, produce, what produces innovation is the research with originality and diversity based on researchers' unbound ideas. What produces innovations is the research with originality and diversity based on researchers' unbound ideas. It is important to support academic and basic research for the investment towards the future. It is important to support academic and basic research for the investment towards the future. The future can be constructed by academic and our, our basic research. I understand and, uh, that the mes one, one of the uh, messages from uh, 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 Prime Minister Abe. And also uh, Minister Hakubun Shimomura from Minister of Education, Culture Science, uh, Sports and Science Technology kindly delivered lectures at the Global Symposium on Scientific Breakthroughs on 26th. And the conf also, uh, he gave a very kind speech at the conference dinner that held uh, last night. And uh, he said many things uh, for us, but uh, I'd like to just pick up uh, one of his passages. And uh, he mentioned about the Japanese researchers who won uh, Nobel Prizes are uh, Isamu Akasaki, uh, Hiroshi Amano, and Shuji Nakamura. Also, uh, he uh, mentioned about Professor Shinya Yamanaka for IP cells. And uh, uh, he said that uh, those uh, Nobel Prizes were acquired uh, based on the you know innovative uh, research, of course, but also by the support of the fund funding for our academic and basic research. And at MEXT, our Minister of Education and Science and Technology, uh, they are, I mean, our, our Minister Shimomura and uh, our MEXT people are reforming our, uh, their system, our system, I should say, for grants and aid for scientific research called Kakenhi 
This is Japan's most competitive research funding supporting uh, diverse academic research in all, fi all fields. This is what uh, uh, Mr. S uh, Shimomura said, and he said that we are completely reviewing all the Kakenhi programs right now and evaluation methods, and we'll set up a new global Kakenhi fund. It's called a new global Kakenhi fund. Through these efforts, we are aiming to create create breakthroughs by merging knowledge that transcends uh, sectors, institutions, and national boundaries. He said mo more things, and I bet uh, his message will be up on the uh, JSPS uh, web pages, I, I think. And uh, uh, then, as for discussion, uh, we have two side events on uh, the day before yesterday, May 6th. 26th. First one is what uh, that I said, uh, Global Symposium on sci Scientific Breakthroughs, and second, Roundtable on Building Research and Education Capacity in Africa. Uh, Prime Minister Abe uh, told many things about uh, how to support uh, Africa uh, for research. I believe those were effective in advancing the discussion on two discussion themes. As outcome documents of this annual, annual meeting, we endorsed two statements, one statement of principles for funding scientific breakthroughs, and two, second, a GRC approaches to building research and education capacity, how to nurture young scientists and young people. In the statement of principles for uh, funding scientific breakthroughs, you can see a strong message from the GRC participants. In the first sentence, uh, you have uh, handouts, and uh, I, I, I read that, but the, uh, it says in the first sentence, a robust and broad foundation for researcher-driven basic research is needed as a source for, for future scientific breakthroughs and innovations. Uh, a, robust, a robust and broad foundation for researcher-driven basic research is needed as a source for future scientific breakthroughs and innovations. We try to identify common principles for funding scientific breakthroughs, such as freedom, flexibility, diversity, interdisciplinary research, and others, and send a strong message to the policymakers and public that we need to support research continuity to generate breakthroughs in the future. So for the GRC approaches to building research and education capacity, I bet, uh, or I'd like to ask Dr. Damos, uh, to explain the details, and um, not only that, uh, she would say many things, I, I think. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, and thank you very much. I'm Beverly Demons, representing the National Research Foundation of South Africa. Uh, and we have been a co-host with the Japanese uh, JSPS um, for this fourth Global Research Council, and we've been very privileged to work as co-partners in uh, the preparation for this meeting. We do have a long history of also working uh, with JSPS as an agency, so Japan, South Africa agencies working together uh, on building research, funding research projects over a number of years. And so these kind of relationships are very important. Uh, international linkages uh, that drive uh, research production. So for us as the NRF and definitely uh, from Science and Technology South Africa, we have a very strong focus on internationalization of science because we see this internationalization of science as a vehicle through which we can build research through various modalities, be it uh, research projects, uh, PhD programs, uh, research exchange, uh, and various modalities that we use uh, to share knowledge, resources, and expertise between our different countries. So I think the one between NRF and JSPS, uh, and also in association with JST, uh, is one that is working and will continue to grow as we continue the conversations going forward. Um, in this particular meeting, um, NRF uh, and South Africa, in the sense, was one of the first countries from the South to uh, co-host a GRC meeting. And I think we've set a good uh, standard for these kinds of partnerships going forward and the quality of the meetings. It's a global meeting. 
And therefore we find that the conversations coming to these meetings, the conversations uh, are framed within a global uh, ideas and global conversations. W what I found over the day, past three days at least, is that even though we go back to our regions and then back to our countries, when we get together as a global collective, as a research and technology and innovation systems, we are generally facing very similar problems, but in varying degrees. And so the two themes that were discussed um, over the days, the themes of how to fund for scientific breakthroughs, and then how to build the capacity of your research system, especially a focus on young researchers, are two very important topics. We cannot become as countries, no matter what country, whether you're from the north or the south, you cannot hope to become more innovative, you cannot hope to be stay globally competitive or become globally competitive unless we s find that we can think about how to fund for the future, how to fund for innovation, how to fund for breakthroughs that are going to change quality of life, uh, technology, the way that we do things, the environment, sustainability of the environment. And in order to get to those breakthroughs, we need to invest in the people, the skills, uh, uh, the expertise, the uh, environment that they would need, the science and technology infrastructure, and the capacity that that system is going to have. So I think over these three days, what we have done is to really interrogate and, and, and spend time thinking about how different uh, granting research councils can make a difference in their local first country basis, but then collectively at a regional level, and then to share our collective responsibilities and insights uh, around a global table. And I found that uh, very interesting. And it's important to remain globally relevant and to join in those discussions. So from a National Research Foundation point of view, uh, we are an active participant in the Global Research uh, Council. One of the key uh, initiatives that we uh, hosted as well with JSPS as a side event to this uh, meeting was a um, workshop or a, a dialogue around support for young researchers, um, especially um, use using the work uh, and the emphasis on sustainability and development. And um, we had very interesting conversations with um, United Nations University of Tokyo, and we'll find that I think Aldo would give you some more information on that, and our uh, meetings that we had in Africa prior to this uh, meeting going forward. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Aldous Strubel. I am Director Internationalization at the National Research Foundation. I would just like to reiterate uh, that we were quite pleased to have partnered with an esteemed agency like JSPS in co-hosting this seminal event. It is becoming seminal every year. And uh, in the words of Dr. De Mons, we certainly see that even with a theme like capacity development, which is usually associated with a developing country environment, there are a number of similarities and the same challenges that both developing and developed countries faces in this context. We were especially pleased by the side event mentioned on Monday, on Tuesday, uh, relating to next generation researchers with United Nations University. Their Education for Sustainable Development Africa project, which is a long running engagement between a number of J Japanese and African universities, including South African universities, has really set the benchmark for an integrated and strategic collaborative focus when it comes to disciplinary areas of investment, but with a very deep area of um, investment in next generation or young researcher development. That for all of us, even as a cross-cutting theme for these discussions, was certainly at the top of the agenda because after all, renewal and investment in the next generation is what will take our science forward. 
As was stated also, South Africa and the NRF was not only the first country in the South, but of course the first country in Africa to co-host the seminal event. And we've been very fortunate to link at this level also working very closely together with our other partners from the African continent. At the regional consultation meeting in November last year in South Africa on behalf of Sub-Saharan Africa, 17 science granting councils from the approximate 25 on the continent participated. It will stay a very important and strategic focus for us to increase the African voice and the African participation at the future science granting councils. Very lastly, there is a continued expectation from all science granting councils to show the return on investment for research, both from their principals, their governments, the funders, the stakeholders, and very importantly, the society or the population of each of the countries. Although it's not been a loose standing theme, the implication of all the discussions are always that impact or the effectiveness of the research that we do for the betterment of society. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Anzai, Dr. Damons, and Dr. Strobel, for your uh, report out of the, the fourth annual meeting. Um, for the uh, Global Research Council government governing board meeting, there was a decision that the next uh, annual meeting in 2016 will be uh, co-hosted by the Science, Science and Engineering Research Board of India and our uh, Research Council UK. And uh, we have now uh, Professor uh, Chandrasekhar and Professor Lydans uh, here. So I would like to ask uh, to, uh, to introduce about uh, uh, your, uh, your planning about the 2016 meeting. You can, you can speak. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Chandrasekhar. I head the Science and Research Engineering Board of uh, India, uh, which is a major funding agency built on the lines of uh, National Science Foundation uh, US. And we are pleased to uh, host uh, the fifth uh, GRC annual meeting uh, in New Delhi, partnering with uh, Research Council UK. You know that uh, India and UK has a long-standing relationships, uh, so it's natural for us to come together to host this meeting. And uh, these meetings are, uh, you know, when you, we have to make a bid to the council uh, to uh, ask them hosting for the meeting. Uh, we did that in uh, February to early this year. And I was uh, happy that the council considered our request and then uh, gave us the opportunity to host this uh, meeting. And the meeting will be held in New Delhi next year in May uh, 19th and 20th of uh, 2016. Uh, we also have a reception meeting the day before the 18th of May. So the meeting will be in New Delhi and the dates are May 18th, 19th and 20th. And also the, as uh, Professor Bai said that uh, in each meeting we have a thematic topic to discuss. Uh, so for the next annual meeting in Delhi, uh, we have selected uh, two topics uh, for the uh, discussion. One is the, the equality and the status of women in science is the one uh, topic. Uh, the second topic is uh, interdisciplinarity because the these days the funding are looking for the interdisciplinary project where we can bring in uh, expertise from various institutions and various disciplines together to work on a similar project. Uh, therefore, this is one of the important areas of research. Uh, therefore, we'll have a discussion. And to tell you more about the uh, these topics, uh, I would hand over to Rick. Thank you. Thank you, Chandra. Um, just to echo uh, our delight and excitement that we're able to host this next year, uh, and we're equally delighted and excited to be doing it with with India, I think it's going to be a very fruitful and positive opportunity. Uh, why have we chosen these two topics? Uh, well, they're both uh, of urgent current relevance within global research. The issue about the representation of women within the uh, global research workforce uh, is one we've all been conscious of for decades now. Uh, and both as an act of fairness, creating equal opportunity, 
and also because if women are not fully represented in research and science, you are neglecting talent. And so we wish to try and encourage global research leaders to think about positive ways in which they can encourage the realization of that talent within the global workforce. So that's the first reason. Um, the second reason for the interdisciplinary work uh, is because increasingly research challenges are complex problems. If you think about obvious things like climate change uh, or how you relieve issues around uh, natural disasters or things of that sort, they don't require single disciplinary solutions. What they require is disciplinary cross-disciplinary expertise, who is which is able to bring a variety of different perspectives, a variety of different skills, a variety of different know-hows to bear upon really very complicated and urgent problems. Now, the problem is with interdisciplinary work that traditionally universities and uh, research funding bodies have been organized on discipline-based lines. So there's a widespread recognition of the importance of interdisciplinary activity, but structures which are not particularly well adapted to enable that. So what we'll be looking for using the convening power of the Global Research Council is to try and identify the best conditions which will enable interdisciplinary work to thrive over the next decade. So that's our reasoning behind choosing these two problems, an increase in capacity and talent through a balancing of the gender profile and a way of addressing really urgent contemporary problems through interdisciplinary research. So thank you for that, and it's going to be very interesting. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Chandrasekhar and uh, Professor Lydans, for your introduction to the next annual meeting. So that is uh, the briefing from the participants of uh, the GRC participants. And now I would like to open the floor for the media representatives to uh, make uh, Q uh, questions to the participants. You could uh, make an uh, uh, intervention uh, either in English or Japanese. And please uh, indicate your name and uh, your affiliates uh, before you uh, make a uh, uh, comment. So um, if anyone, uh, yes, please. The microphone. Dennis Normile of Science Magazine. Uh, you've been holding these for three years now. Can you point to any impact that has resulted from these meetings? Any impact on policymakers uh, and on overall funding around the world? So the GRC meeting was held in Berlin and in Beijing for the previous two GRC meetings. The one topic we are discussed is about open access. So through these uh, discussions, and we have uh, this during this meeting, we have uh, some uh, statement, and also due to uh, this uh, discussion, uh, we encourage uh, the funding agencies and some uh, you know research institutions to do something to push forward the OA, you know, you know, so the open access. So for example, in our uh, academy, I'm from Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, we have pushed forward the uh, OA to open access. Most of the public papers, uh, they can free access by the internet, published by our academy. I think that's one of the impact of the, you know, the topics uh, discussed in the GRC. So we, for example, this time, this year, we focus on the two uh, themes. One is about the, for funding uh, scientific breakthroughs. So I think, I believe, for the funding agencies, that's a very important you know, topics, how to uh, support the young talents. Uh, during the, the, this meeting, the, you know, the several head of the funding agencies also gave you know, very uh, interesting, very uh, good proposals for uh, how to, uh, to fund the, uh, the breakthroughs research. And also, 
but uh, to uh, pay attention for a young scientists uh, to set up some, uh, you know, uh, the correct uh, evaluation system. Yeah. I think it's a very fair question, but it needs to be kept in mind that it is only three years, although it might sound like a long time. As uh, Professor Bai has indicated, this year for the first time, very dedicated working groups around the themes per region engage to come up with action plans for implementation and report back in the next year of hosting this event. Certainly with a statement of principles for capacity development, there's already been a list of activities that has been committed to for especially from the African region, but uh, certainly also for all the, all the other regions. Um, engagements have been framed to collaborate. I think what the major impact so far has been is to agree on common principles that is really transcending the developed and the developing world. And if one thinks the statement was made that collectively the representation at the GRC meetings funds in excess of $50 billion a year, if there's an agreement on common approaches, for instance, peer review um, or quality or approaches to um, aspects of research integrity, that already is a major step. But we do look forward in subsequent meetings, and I think the UK-India meeting next year will probably be a determining meeting to take an impact orientation forward with tangible activities. I just want to add that these meetings, uh, last three meetings, uh, has given us opportunity to meet all the heads of the funding agencies, number one. Otherwise, we are never met. And we are also discussing the common ways of funding the projects. And also discuss the amount of collaboration between the countries involved. So this has helped us to build up relationship with many agencies, uh, build up collaboration with the many exchange programs, uh, with the multinational and binational thing. For the uh, last three years, has been quite useful for this uh, kind of meeting, and it, I'm sure uh, we have a long way to go ahead. Um, I, I just wanted to add that um, the Global Research Council isn't an executive agency. That is, it doesn't have a resource base it can implement things directly. What it does do is assemble collective views about the way you tackle global issues in research management, because research is now a global enterprise because of the internet, because of the ease of travel, because of collaboration, because of joint funding. It's a response to changing conditions rather than something which is going to execute new policies. And I think the development of peer or merit review is a very good example of the way which you try and spread good practice across the world. Thank you, Dr. Anzai. Yeah, uh, I just had, uh, would like to add that uh, we have been discussing quite a lot of, not, uh, know, as uh, Professor Bai said, uh, open access and also research integrity. And uh, those two themes were, you know, are reflected uh, you know, the discussions on those two themes in Global Research Councils, uh, Council were reflected to, you know, uh, various behaviors and, uh, you know, uh, proposals to the government by research funding agencies uh, in each country. And in Japan, uh, one example is the, uh, you know, uh, the publishing of the book for research integrity for, uh, you know, uh, was uh, translated in, in into English and just published, uh, and that English version was published uh, a week ago or so, and you can read that. And uh, also for open access uh, with JST and other organizations, we have uh, uh, no, made some many proposals for that. That sort of movement uh, was propelled and uh, you know, supported by the discussions and uh, information sharing uh, in the forum of this you know, a Global Research Council, I should add. Thank you very much uh, for the GRC participants for your feedback. Are there any other uh, questions? あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
、えー、共,同共同して何,何かしら作っていくというかあの共同選挙の中ではあの効果的審査プロセスを探求するために共同すべきであるとあの科学的なブレイクスローを生み出すための,あの審査プロセスが一番最も重要なポイントだと思うんですけどもこれから各国どういうふうに共同してあの審査プロセスを向上させていくための取り組みを進めるのかお話をお聞かせていってください。Um, are there any participants? Dr. Anzai, please. We have been discussing about Nihon Ode Moshagamasto, Shinsa no process, no, he joined Juo Datino, Sono Tori, Idarmas. Mata GRC in Oitewa, Shinsa no process in Suiteno, no Joho no Kokan, Mata Joho no Kyo Yumo, Yatimas. ただのそれを何かこう世界で一つの審査プロセスにまとめようとかそういうことよりもやはりそ,のそれぞれの国でそれぞれのファンディングのシステムがありますのでそのファンディングシステムのが最も有効に働くようにその審査のプロセスをもう共有していくであのお互いに学び合っていくということが大事だとそういうことだと考えています。Thank you very much. Are there any other feedback from the stage? If you don't mind, I can respond briefly.、Um, we've gone through a process of learning from well established or developed systems of、uh, reviews and、uh, peer review systems. And putting this at a level that are comparable but with quality as the basis of the decision making. Has usually been a little bit of a contentious issue among funding agencies and even among so called established funding agencies. If there is a fair but inclusive system of review of proposals that are commonly agreed on, and of course it will never be global, but at least from a partnership perspective, number one, it can increase quality, number two, there's a fairness that it brings in joint reviews. And number three, it is a very important learning process for the different systems. So I'm very happy that Dr. Anzai、um, used the examples that he has because it is certainly from a developmental perspective, but also from a quality engagement perspective, been a very useful process. It will become increasingly important, I think, if we think of a global collaborative framework with that one sometimes contentious issue of what joint reviews entail. Thank you very much.、Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I see that、uh, this is、uh, already 10 minutes past at 2 o'clock, and、um, I would like to ask、uh, any other、uh, questions, if you, if one or two questions for,、uh, from the、uh, media representatives. You could, ask,、uh, you could ask in Japanese or English. Yes, please. すみませんあの、もう一度お願いします。あのえー、と研究あ教育研究の能力構築のためのアプローチの方なんですけども、これであのプラットフォームの構築をあの提案していると思うんですけども、このプラットフォームというのは、世界的な共通基盤をみんなで作っていこうというような話なんでしょうか。それとももうちょっとあの各国でプラットフォームを作ってあのやっていくとそういうようなことなんでしょうか。Yes, Dr. Damons, please. I think at this stage there was an agreement that there isn't currently a global platform, although there's commonalities between country level and even local levels of、um, provision for capacity development. Uh, in our discussions yesterday, we found commonality in the types of programs that countries are using to identify talent, to grow their young researchers, to develop research careers.、Um, but we haven't yet got a global framework for it. But what I did find、uh, will happen is that around those conversations, Uh, granting councils and different countries will now be able to collaborate much easier because, in a conversation across the table, we've already identified 
your system and my system may not be the same, but these are our points in which we can see immediate collaboration. So for us, for example, as NRF, we have at least one or two conversations from this meeting to take forward on points of commonality between two or more countries, and therefore it starts a process of, of working together much faster uh, on areas. But already in our bilateral and agency-to-agency -agency agreements, that those are areas that have been identified, and that would be a country-to-country -country or in a multilateral agreement between a number of countries, uh, but not globally. But we find it does work uh, already at a country-to-country -country level. Yes, Professor Larians. Uh, I, was, I was simply going to add that it would be um, very difficult to establish a unitary system because conditions are so various across the world. Um, and this isn't just, it's worth recognizing, a country-to-country -country problem. Uh, even within regions, for example, Europe, you've got very great differences between very established systems and very new systems. And even within single countries, you've got areas where research capacity is very heavily concentrated and others which are trying to develop that capacity. Now, I think what holds all these things together is the, um, is the power of collaboration. And I do think that really will be the guiding thread. How do we engineer collaboration, partly as a way of learning from each other and partly as a way of trying to pool resources and partly as a way of trying to share good practice on common endeavor? I just want to endorse uh, Rick's views that uh, it's very difficult to have a common uh, theme for all the funding because of capacity building, because the priorities of the countries are going to be different. For example, yesterday we had a discussion uh, where uh, Singapore and India had different views because uh, if you look at the size of the country of India and the size of the country of Singapore, obviously we can't have a common platform. Therefore, it's difficult to have a common theme, but we also exchange views, uh, share the common knowledge involved, and if there is possibility, we would like to collaborate. Otherwise, we should have the different uh, priorities uh, to, depending on the national priorities. Thank you very much. Any other um, questions from the floor? Any, uh, um, yes, please. <laughs> I, I, uh, Dennis Normal of Science Magazine again. Uh, one of the uh, topics for discussion next year will be um, giving women greater power uh, within the scientific community. Um, I, I don't take this, please don't take this as, as direct criticism, but my understanding is that on the, your governing council, uh, you have one woman member. Um, <laughs> out, out of one out of how many? One out of 11. Um, could you possibly somehow set an example to the scientific community by boosting the participation of women on your governing council in time for the meeting next year? Any comments from the... I think what you've just given is an example of the problem. <laughs> I mean, that, that is a perfect illustration of the difficulty. Uh, and you're not going to solve this uh, over even a year, let alone overnight. This is a multi-generational development. Um, in the UK, and I gather also in other countries, you've got uh, entry rates into science and research which are starting to get closer together. So more and more women are coming in. When you go up the career ladder, there are fewer and fewer women. So this is not just about getting women into science and making the use of their skills and abilities. It's also enabling them to pursue executive careers which can actually develop and influence the way science is going to go. And you can't do that overnight. It's something that's got to happen over an extended period of time. But you've got to begin somewhere, you know, and this is a start, I think. Thank you very much. Um, yes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, I was just saying to my colleague here, um, th this kind of scene uh, <laughs> is, is one, unless I'm at a gender summit, this is it most times uh, in terms of, of, you know, what in, in, in science meetings at least, um, wha what it looks like. Um, so 
I also raised the point uh, at, at the meeting itself, so that you don't think we're not as critical of ourselves. <laughs> um, that it it really that the council or the, the GRC as it stands right now couldn't necessarily hold that meeting um, from a, r a real point of view unless you had a change composition around the table, which is exactly uh, what you're saying, um, because the the meeting itself, as you as you see, is a it is a larger collection of, of males uh, around the table, and that is exactly what what we are talking to, is to change the transformative nature uh, and the transformation of the science and technology system, um, not necessarily only from a researcher point of view, but also from a leadership point of view. Um, I think somebody correctly pointed out that it's, it's, it shouldn't be about reporting on metrics. How many PhD students, how many master's students, um, how many uh, associate professors. Uh, that that discussion that's going to be held um, is, is going to need to explore and expose underlying factors, the issues of power the issues of decision making, the issues of where the power lies, the issues of access, all of those issues which are sometimes considered softer issues are actually actually the defining issues of career paths and the defining issues of um, male and female movement through a, a trajectory of any sort. So I think there is a commitment and a, there was an honest reflection of uh, the kinds of things that need to be explored even prior to getting to uh, next year's GRC. Thank you, Professor Evans. Uh, can I, I'll add, uh, sorry, I'll j one more thing. What, one thing this is going to do is trying to gather data on these issues because we don't have strong baseline data globally. So here's a beginning to that. Of the 56 research councils at this meeting, 13 are women. I don't know how you evaluate that, but there we are, there's a bit of data. Professor. I just want to add on a lighter note, even in the press I see more men than the women. Okay, the uh, member of the governing board of the GRC are elected from those heights of the funding agency of the, that country. So I think that's just not the issue of the governing board of the GRC, depending on how many the female heights of the funding agencies the worldwide. So I think that's uh, important. Yes. Uh, fund research funding agencies are standing at just at the intersection of uh, researchers and government, general public, and many others. And uh, at the same time, our, uh, many countries are have the same problem of uh, how to increase the you know, uh, uh, gender equality. Or no percentage. I mean, in Japan, I think the percentage of women scientists is just uh, 13 or 14 percent, and uh, it's an urgent matter to uh, increase the percentage of women scientists are uh, here in Japan too. And uh, I, I bet the next year's uh, meeting uh, that topic uh, would uh, you know uh, give us much power, you know, or to support us to you know proceed forward. Uh, to push our each country or government or in a budgeting office uh, to promote or uh, the uh, you know promotion of uh, of women scientists. So uh, GRC is uh, you know uh, still a uh, kind of forum, but the it is ha uh, getting to have much power uh, to do that kind of uh, things uh, uh, that are you know. Uh, shared programs uh, for many countries and uh, gender equality for research and science is one of our the urgent issues among them. Thank you. Thank you very much. I see this is uh, already getting a very exciting um, discussion. I would so I really uh, encourage all of you to be present at the New Delhi meeting next year. So if you any final remarks. Um, if not, um, I'd like to uh, close the meet close this meeting. But before closing, um, in addition to the two outcome documents which was distributed here, there will be a number of um, uh, documents which will be available 
at uh, either at the GRC uh, official website or our uh, JS, uh, JSPS and the NRF uh, Pulse Annual Meeting website. So please uh, try to visit s some of the these websites. Yes. I just want to invite all of you for the next year's meeting in New Delhi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mitch. So thank you very much for everyone uh, coming to this floor. And I would like to thank all the uh, participants who came to uh, this press conference. So thank you very much to everyone. So this concludes the uh, press conference.